seems like Thanksgiving has come early this year. I keep thinking it's a week from this week. Anyway, because of Thanksgiving, this is why we're talking about gratitude today. Truly, what you're going to learn this morning is that gratitude has so much depth to it. Living a life of gratitude is going to find your life being lived from a completely different perspective than, can I say, average humanity. We live in a society today where people feel that they're entitled in so many ways. And if you engage in a conversation with people like that, you will see the biggest gap in their life that needs to be filled is gratitude. They're lacking gratitude. People who have this sense of entitlement lack gratitude. And, and what happens in situations like that if you are at all sensitive to the nature of that person, their aura becomes so tightly bound around their physical body, there's no radiation coming from them. And when there is a lack of radiation, there is a, re a lack of receptivity and a lack of being able to give. So giving and receiving is just one little gift of gratitude. So let us think this week about the power of gratitude, that it goes way beyond saying thank you. You know, that we teach our children right off the bat, say thank you to Aunt Tilly, you know? <laughs> And to thank, thank Grandma and Grandpa for their Christmas gift and so forth. It's, it's, it's just a beginning. It's just a beginning. Master Moria, in speaking about gratitude, said, Gratitude is a great motive force. So let's think about this. It's a great motive force. Force. So you might, if you're taking notes, you might want to make a note of that, like a seed thought that we can think about, you know, this week. What does he mean when he says that gratitude is a great motive force? The other thing to think about is that nobody solicits gratitude. Nobody solicits gratitude. But great is the quality of this power. So now we're learning that it is a great motive force. We're learning that it is a quality. And we're learning it is power. And this is just the first two sentences of the talk. <laughs> what we're learning about gratitude. Gratitude acts as a purifier. That will mean nothing to you until you consciously begin to think about gratitude in your life. For example, there are so many divided families in the world today. When a family divides because uh, someone over on that side of the family said something nasty to this side of the family, and pretty soon the whole focus and attention of the family is based on that nastiness. If you turn that around and instead think, you know, three years ago, that nasty person was so good to us. 
They did this, they did that. They enriched my life. They gave me a day of joy or a year of joy, or they did this for me, they did that for me. And I did that and I did this for them. What happens is that division can in time change into unity. That's the power of gratitude. The motive force behind it is unity. We don't want to live a life of divisiveness. We really don't. But there's something in the nature of a human being that more easily turns to negative than to positive. So experiencing gratitude at its depth, we're told it is a purifying force. Purification turns that mechanism of negativity to positivity. That's the power. G Master Moria says gratitude is a means of hastening the path. So we want to think, what does it mean to hasten the path? See, this, you know, I'm giving you these, these uh, little seed thoughts that you could write a book about. What does it mean to hasten the path? It means to live more purposefully as a soul. To live more purposefully as a soul. When you are with a group of people, how many can you identify are living a life as a soul whose life is being lived with purpose or whose life is being lived with a sense of responsibility? That's how we hasten the path. That's how when we come into our next incarnation, we will start earlier in life with a sense of purpose. We won't wait until we're 26, and I'm using that time frame, age 26, because this is your, in your chart, your lunar return, and then your Saturn return happens a couple of years later. Let's start right out in the beginning of life, where the soul is going to anchor itself, see, in our nature, and we can no longer wander about in the desert wondering what is life all about. Now we come back. And all of these experiences of hastening the path is the foundation of our life that comes about through gratitude, as a result of gratitude. Gratitude is an affirmation of the good that exists and the good is, that is done to oneself or to others by any means. Gratitude is the energy of life. Listen to this. Gratitude is the energy of life passing through a thought form that affirms that good exists. Let's take, for example, a thought form that we have created of a great teacher or teachers. When the great force of gratitude runs through that thought form, it affirms and acknowledges the beauty of that great one. So most of us here have a thought form of the teacher that introduced us to the wisdom teaching, which was Torquem Ceridarian. And even though he passed many years ago. 
He is still bigger than life to us. And why is that? Because of our gratitude for what he gave to us, the good he gave to us, the sacrificial life that he lived that exemplified a life of how we can live. And that evokes gratitude. It holds with it a sincere decision to carry the torch of their message to as many people as possible. It doesn't mean that they're going to hear you. <laughs> Not always. But what it means is that because you have created a thought form, that thought form stays in their aura. It's very interesting to think about. So if we just take the concept of gratitude, and we talk about gratitude, that thought form is going to stay in their aura, even though they're not conscious of it. And they're going to wake up in that thought form and begin to think about gratitude. And in the process of waking up to the principle of gratitude, their life undergoes the process of purification. Purification is to purify their thoughts, to no longer take that member of the family that tried to destroy the family, but to think about that that person was a human being that God put on this planet. And because of that, I am grateful for life. So I am grateful for that person. No matter what they did to the family, I am still grateful because they were given the gift of life. See, so you don't have to go into the dynamics of their personality or the way they live their life. We don't have to do that. But as we are thinking, I am so grateful that they were given the gift of life that begins a purification process. Then you start thinking, wow, you know, 10 years ago, I had this wonderful experience that changed my life. And I am so grateful for it. It's almost magical of how gratitude is a purifying factor in our life, and it hastens our path. The power of gratitude is a force that is in harmony with beauty and goodness and truth. Those three words or three principles. Gratitude is a force that is in harmony with these three principles. Gratitude carries within it the principles of beauty, goodness, and truth. So when we experience beauty, how can I say this? You cannot experience or see or smell or touch or taste beauty without having gratitude. The power of gratitude creates beneficial traditions such as a tradition that becomes part of our aura. This is not a dogmatic tradition or a historical tradition or even a cultural tradition. It is a God-given gift. And in that God-given gift, we begin to radiate through our aura a healing process. Think about that. The more gratitude that you carry with you in your aura, the more there is a presence of healing that you carry with you. And just being around a person of gratitude can find 
different elements in your nature being healed. Gratitude purifies our threefold personality. For example, if the forces of gratitude enter into our consciousness, it eliminates distorted thought forms. It eliminates illusion. Thoughts that are hindrances to our evolution, especially to our spiritual evolution. It eliminates harmful thoughts. And it also eliminates, and I found this really incredible when I was studying about gratitude, that gratitude eliminates thought forms that are half-built. Isn't that amazing? It just blew my mind. Or thought forms that are in the process of decay, all within our mental sphere. That's what gratitude can do. So we can ask ourselves, do we have the spirit of gratitude in our heart and in our mind? In Agni Yoga, verse 31, that's the Agni Yoga book, Verse 31, it says, the quality of gratitude is the finest purification of the organism. Great is the healing power of the emission of gratitude. So it's not just a matter of telling your little bundle of joy to thank grandma for her gift. <laughs> It goes way beyond that into our adult life. So as we think and ponder upon the quality of gratitude, what happens is we begin to assimilate the energy of gratitude. We learn how the energy of gratitude changes the level of our consciousness. And we learn how a change of consciousness can bring a new standard into our life. So there's a little side note, sidebar, of a definition of expansion of consciousness, that an expansion of consciousness can create a new standard of life. So, you know, I can't import you know, uh, I cannot emphasize the importance of this to take these words off the paper, allow an experience to expand your consciousness and then see what the result is. See if there is a new standard that comes into your life. And if that new standard does take place, how does it change you? I can tell you the first thing that it does, it changes your perspective of people, your perspective of your enemies, your perspective of your friends, your perspective of your family and your spouse. Great is the healing power of gratitude. You learn how a new standard in your life introduces new changes into your thinking, feelings, and action process. The great ones tell us that we must learn to recognize that everything that exists is a treasure, just like we were experiencing in our meditation this morning, the way Richard was reading, you know, from Torquem's book of poetry on gratitude, that treasures such as mountains, rivers, lakes, streams, forests, flowers, birds, animals, minerals, and human beings, when we learn to recognize that these are gifts that form a treasury in our life, 
that when you see a flower or you hear the song of a bird or you're climbing that mountain that we call Thumb Butte here, and we survived it, that, <laughs> that it is a gift. And that gift makes us grateful. When I lived in Florida, we didn't have mountains. Everything was sea level <laughs> or below. So moving to Prescott in Arizona and these beautiful mountains, how can you not be grateful? We were grateful for the ocean. We were grateful for the Gulf. We were grateful for those beautiful sunsets, you know, in Florida. But in Arizona, the beauty is there from a whole different altitude. <laughs> <laughs> Life is a treasure. Nature is a treasure. A treasure is something or someone that becomes a blessing for those around and about us, to all those who are also far away from us. Like I was saying with Torquem, you know, we just celebrated his birthday not too many days ago. And What a treasure he has been in our life and still continues to be. I mean, what a gift that was for all of us, for our life. And that's just one example. But he certainly was a blessing to us. We must be grateful for the opportunities that are given to us. In every major religion, emphasis is given to the subject of gratitude. So if we can read about gratitude in every single religion, it's got to be important. <laughs> you know, there's a reason that, that these great ones talk to us about gratitude. <clears throat> because the greatest gift gratitude gives to us is the chance to increase the treasury within, the treasury that is within ourselves, in our chalice, in our heart, and that soul within. A treasure is an object, a power, a living being, or a virtue that multiplies and meets our physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual needs. For a number of years, I would travel to Puerto Rico to share the teachings. During one of my trips, I visited a place called Yayuya, which is a small village in Puerto Rico, where there is a huge boulder in a creek near the village, upon which there are many Stone Age petroglyphs, among which we found is a Chintamani, which is what we call, you know, the banner of peace. And the local people there call the stone the talking stone of Yayua. Why was I so grateful? Well, because I had read about the history of the Rourke Pact and Banner of Peace. And I had read that this is a symbol you can find all over the world. And this just happened to be a symbol that Nicholas Rourke and Francis Grant and others were inspired with and decided to make this symbol the symbol of peace and the symbol of culture. And this is why we have this symbol here, because this is a sanctuary of light, a sanctuary of peace, a sanctuary of culture. So I was so grateful to see in the middle of nowhere was this petroglyph, petroglyph with the image of the Chintamani stone, Chintamani stone or circle. For some, these, the circle with the three dots means the treasure of the world. We had some people here yesterday, 
and Friday evening, they didn't understand the symbol and they thought it was anti-Christian. See, that's what the world is doing to us today, that something we see that we don't know about must be bad. But this symbol is all over the world. And it was so significant to Nicholas Rourke that he created a pact of culture and peace that President Roosevelt and 20 other countries signed so that every, anywhere you see the banner of this circle with the three dots during wartime cannot be bombed. That building cannot be bombed. That building is a place of refuge, of culture, of history, a place where you can walk in. And in fact, this is at the North Pole. It's also, we're told, at the top of Mount Everest. So how can you look at a symbol like that and because you don't know about it yet, make something negative into it? But when you recognize it, and going back to my experience when I saw, saw this big boulder and there was a circle with the three dots, my gratitude because to me, Puerto Rico is really blessed because one of their early traditions, they have uh, uh, Indians, I don't remember their name any longer, but they're the ones that carved that symbol into that big boulder that's way off <coughs> that most people will never see or recognize or be around. He, but it had a magnetic quality, and it pulled me right to it. The first thing I saw, there were petroglyphs glyphs all over that big boulder, but that's the only one I saw, because it's magnetic. When we look at nature, at the mountains, the air, the sky, the rivers, the birds, they belong to all of us to enjoy and to take care of. We also were given a mother and father, sometimes sisters and brothers, aunts and uncles, friends and teachers, all treasures. There are other treasures you cannot necessarily see, such as their love, the love your mother has for you your father has for you, the love of co-workers, the master, and more. Sometimes it seems like we must lose those treasures before we can recognize them. Oftentimes in a marriage, a person does not see the treasure she has in her husband until he walks away or she walks away, and then for the rest of their lives, she misses them, or he misses her, or they come back and they get married again. <laughs> we must daily recognize the many treasures that have been given to us and to cherish them with our gratitude. People live surrounded by treasures but they feel empty because they are closed. Their heart they, is closed. We also have inner treasures. In the Lotus Sutra, a sutra written about 500 years before Christ, there's a story about a tower. And here's the story. As Lord Buddha was talking to thousands of his listeners, he suddenly saw a mighty tower rise up out of the earth. This was called the treasure tower. Think of what this symbolizes, a treasure tower. At that time, there appeared before the Lord Buddha a tower 
made with seven kinds of precious stone. See the, the symbolism? Seven kinds of precious stones. This tower was four miles high into the sky, and it was suspended in midair, full of precious objects. Jeweled rosaries hung from the tower. 10,000 million jeweled bells were suspended from its top. The most precious fragrances emanated from it. Angels and gods all singing, serving, and worshiping this tower. Let us think about this beautiful story. We're not going to read it on the front page of the New York Times, or the Huffington Post, or the Guardian, or these Facebook. We could put it on Facebook, though. <laughs> but what, a, what an image. The tower that emerged from the earth, symbolizing humanity in all the spiritual treasures that a person can have. In the Ageless Wisdom, the treasure, this treasure tower, is called the inner lotus, or the chalice, which is hidden. But slowly, as its treasures increase, they emerge and bless the world with its jewels and treasures. For billions of years, all the treasures of which you were aware or have experienced are accumulated in that diamond chalice. For example, every time you spread gratitude, you deposit jewels in your chalice. St. Paul wrote, carefully concealed in man are all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In the book Dynamics of the Soul, we are told treasures are used to help people, to free and uplift and heal, inspire and enlighten people. All great ones, geniuses, talents, heroes, and real leaders share their treasures as wisdom, knowledge, love, music, poetry, dance, sculpture and other forms. We have much to be grateful to them for, for they shared what they had with us. When I listen to people in the esoteric community talk these days about how, yeah, their teachings were OK, but we live in modern society. So then they begin to write their own ideas. And some of these ideas are significant and inspirational. But if you look at the core of their idea and the inspiration coming from that core, it's based on what these great teachers gave to us. So one of my plights is to make sure that we do not lose these teachings. So you're going to find on my Facebook and White Mountains Facebook, and we have an Agni Yoga uh, Living Ethics Community Facebook and blogs and everything that just pours the teaching out into that area. Whether it's Facebook, it doesn't make any difference because we know it's going out into space so that those that are trying to shut the door to what these great ones gave to us, we're just turning around and opening the door back up. It's so significant, their teachings. Christ said, if you want to be perfect, then sell all your belongings, give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven and be one of my followers. People are oftentimes afraid to give what they have to others. When I look at 
just our sanctuary here. Everything's been given to us. We start with the Maitreya here, which really needs to be polished. Uh, <laughs> but this was a gift to one of our dear co-workers who passed last year from cancer. And every time I see this gift, which was given to her by her son-in-law who made it for her. And inside this beautiful statue, this sculpture, are little treasures inside that are radiating energy and light and love and beauty. When I look at these pictures, these pictures were painted. These are, of course, not the original, but they are, you know, uh, copies of the original and the framing, all of this was a gift to us. And all these paintings and everything that we see around here was a gift to them that they passed on to us. And we are grateful. It's healing. Some people think, if I have a great talent, then I need to sell the work of my talents to others. And if I do, I will then have more talent. But you see, this is incorrect thinking. The spiritual law is this. What we give to others goes into our chalice and becomes a treasure as we strive to reach the Tower of Shambhala, the Father's home. And I think I'll end there, because <laughs> we only have five minutes left. So anyway, I hope this has opened the door to you to understand the, the depth and the breadth and the wisdom of gratitude and why it is found in all religions. And all we have to do is keep it in our heart. So happy Gratitude Day. Thank <laughs> you.